Okay, we're all, we're here, we're seated, we're having the time of our lives. Yours is Cloud? Nice. Um, Elizabeth has been at every UbuCon I've been to, possibly <coughs> what, all that there have been, all that there have been. And I told her if she couldn't come to this one, we simply wouldn't hold her. So <laughs> if, if you're having a good time, it's because she's here. Uh, Elizabeth Crumbuck is really active in the Bay Area loco, the local community uh, outreach for, uh, the, uh, for Ubuntu, um, and really big with edubuntu. Um, I've learned an awful lot about edubuntu <laughs> from the sessions we've had. So now, are you set up to go? Hopefully in a moment. Okay, so she's just about ready. Her session is on Ubuntu in the cloud. She's getting herself set up. I feel badly about having run over, so I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> glad that she took a minute to. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so with that in mind, please, everyone from the outside, come on in and take a seat if you'd like. And we're ready for Elizabeth Krumbach with Ubuntu in the cloud. <laughs> So first you'll have to forgive me because I have a really bad cold right now. <laughs> um, so I'll do the best I can. Um, and if anyone has any questions anytime, just uh, raise your hand and hopefully I'll see you and just wave. <laughs> um, so um, presentation on Ubuntu in the cloud. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a member of the Ubuntu Community Council. Uh, Richard mentioned I'm pretty active in a bunch of places. Um, I Last fall I did a deployment of Edubuntu desktop in Ghana. And I'm also um, the web and marketing lead for the Zubuntu project. So if you saw my screen earlier, it's Zubuntu that I'm using. Um, and then the community council is one of the two governing bodies of the Ubuntu project. The other one's the tech board. Uh, the community council governs things like making sure people have mailing lists and making sure people are abiding by the code of conduct and doing other community-related um, activities. Um, my day job is as an automation and tools engineer at HP. Um, so you'll ignore the fact that I'm using a Dell and a little Lenovo for my demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> I just started there last month. Um, my role there right now is actually uh, working on the infrastructure for the OpenStack project. So we're making sure all the systems for the infrastructure, uh, people are using Garrett and Jenkins and all the test suites that developers upload their software to, we make sure the servers run um, for that. And that's not within HP, that's actually the open source project of OpenStack that they have me working on. Um, I'm also on the board of directors for Partimus.org. That's a nonprofit in the San Francisco Bay Area that's been putting uh, Ubuntu desktops into schools in the area. So we're in, I think we've been in something like seven or eight schools, and right now we've got three solid deployments in the area. So I think two in Oakland, um, and then we've got like a laptop cart that's in another school in San Francisco. Um, so uh, we were sort of in and out of schools because, you know, bureaucracy and other things. Things change. People get donations of computer labs and push us to the side and move things around. So we're a pretty dynamic organization. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, my history, uh, before I went to HP, I was a Linux systems administrator uh, for a small tech services provider for about six years. And then prior to that, I was just a Linux hobbyist. So first of all, I'm not going to talk about Juju at all. Everyone should go to George's talk at 12.30 to learn about that. Um, I'm sort of old school Linux sysadmin type person, so I, I don't use the fancy new crazy things, <laughs> um, with the exception of OpenStack. So I don't, I'm not going to cover Juju at all, um, but I'll cover other things in the cloud world. Um, so I'll quickly cover what all the all these stuff as a service things are, uh, just so we're all on the same page as to what we're talking about. Um, then I'll go over some of the options for deploying Ubuntu in the cloud and public options that there are out there and then running your own Ubuntu-based cloud, which I have running on this Lenovo over here. Uh, so this is just the little screen thing I got from Wikipedia. You've got all the things around it, the things that connect into the cloud, which is pretty much the internet. Um, and then you've got things like applications and uh, platforms and different infrastructures. And these are all cloud, so cloud is nebulous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so first you've got things like software as a service, um, that would be your webmail, um, Mint is an online uh, application for managing finances. Uh, you have things like Salesforce, um, and they also offer um, infrastructure as a service, so that's got a star next to it. 
Um, but at, at the core and the basic, it's just software. Um, uh, platform, oh sorry, Salesforce offers platform as a service. Um, platform as a service is uh, where a, a, a service is provided that you write your, your application to. So you might ri write some Python scripts that hook into Google's app engine and that has it run on Google's um, app engine uh, platform. Um, other one, the cloudfoundry.com, um, that's run, run by VMware, I think. Um, and that's uh, another platform you can write your code to. Uh, they also have cloudfoundry.org, which is an open source project, so you can run your own platform in open source. And then um, M Windows Azure actually has a platform as well that you can write um, applications to. So that's the platform. Um, but what we're actually going to talk about is infrastructure as a service. Um, you have a couple of options here. Um, one of them is a VPS, a virtual private server. And these are pretty much drop-in replacements for your old hardware things. They're pretty much meant to be persistent. Um, you just, instead of having your own hardware you manage, you switch everything to a VPS. And then you load up your MySQL databases and your Apache, and then you run your website that runs your blog. Um, pretty much basic uh, translation there. Um, and then Linode has one of these. Um, the Windows Azure service is actually VPS. It's not really like dynamic cloudy stuff. Um, and then I mentioned they also do a platform as a service. Um, and I include them because Canonical highlights them on their website as one of their options for uh, what, they, what they offer Ubuntu on. And then you've got what we think of as the cloud stuff that's like Amazon EC2. So these are less like VPSs because they're meant to be spun up and scaled down and you can deploy lots of them and your applications. You can just put up your blog on an Amazon EC2 instance, um, but they're really meant to be built around scalability. And Amazon's term is elasticity. Um, that's EC2, elastic cloud. Um, and then you've got a company like HP has a cloud, um, Rackspace has a cloud, and Amazon uses uh, proprietary software on top of, of course they run Linux, um, but they use a, a system that they wrote themselves to run their cloud. Um, but HP Cloud and Rackspace Cloud uh, both run OpenStack, which is an open source project that creates a cloud environment. So actually deploying in the cloud. So we're talking about infrastructure as a service. Um, this is from Canonical's website. They've got all kinds of stuff about cloud. And this is just them being very proud of the fact that Ubuntu is in the cloud. And all showing, you know, they've got them on at HP and Rackspace. And it's one of the most popular distributions to be the deployed there. And they talk more about how wonderful they are. Um, so I mentioned VPSs. Um, I've had a VPS with Linode for a long time, and that's why I included them specially in this. Um, and as you can see, um, when you go to launch an instance, um, Linode's me mechanism is pretty much through the web interface. If you want to start up a new Linode, again, you're not deploying tons of them at a time or uh, deploying them every five minutes and killing them again. These are more persistent. So you go through their web interface. You can choose lots of things, but of course, Ubuntu is, is one of the ones that, that's in the option. Um, actually, mine runs Debian. Windows Azure. This is fun to see. So you're going to like Microsoft's website, right? And then you can install Ubuntu. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, they actually there's a there's an apps get installable package for win managing Windows Azure, um, which you'll find on a lot of these um, uh, options. There's uh, command line tools and s interfaces that you can run on your desktop to control what's going on in the cloud. So you can app get install it. I, when I tried doing that, it wanted to remove Network Manager, so I didn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. I think it's broken, but it's Windows. So, <laughs> so um, everyone's probably familiar with Amazon EC2. Um, when I when I asked the Canonical Cloud guys, I was like, why isn't why isn't 1210 in this list? And he said, because no one uses this. <laughs> so this is the web interface that no one uses, but it makes for better slides. Um, I, I also asked what the difference is between this one and the one that Canonical offers from, I think it's Cloud Images, I have it on a slide later, um, .ubuntu.com, and he said the difference is no one uses this one. <laughs> so, but it's actually, it's actually the same image as you'll find. 
Um, and you'll see um, here, there's little like tabs here. And you can also upload your own Amazon image if you create your own AMI. Um, you can also search through community images. And if you search through community image for Ubuntu, you'll find like thousands and thousands of results, which is kind of a mess. Um, so Canonical put together this um, AMI locator for EC2. And my computer behaves, I can actually bring it up. Well, I can't see this bar on my computer. <laughs> I'll just let me know. Um, I'm using XFCE. It's not it's a panel, they call it. Oh cool. Oh, I'm not online, that's right. <laughs> so I'm not gonna show that. Anyway, um it's it's pretty much just um a, a, a form and you, you fill out like what location you want and what image you're searching for. So if you're looking for like the server for 1204, um, you search in those search terms, find the location, so like if you're firing it up on the East Coast or whatever. And then you take that ID that you search for in the locator and you put that into uh, the, uh, here, the, uh, the community search thing and then it'll find the image and that will be the one that's officially uh, sanctioned by Canonical and owned by Canonical, and you know you're not getting an image that's loaded up with tons of spyware of crazy scary things that you don't want. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's the locator. And you can find this, if you go to cloudimages.ubuntu.com, there's all kinds of images for lots of different things there. So in addition to the locator, you'll find images for OpenStack and other cloud platforms there. Um, so HP Cloud, pretty similar to Linode, you'll see there's um, options for installing Ubuntu. And again, anyone who's using this seriously is probably not using the web interface that HP provides. Um, there's an HP Cloud command line option, and I'm pretty sure you can also use OpenStack commands directly with Nova, uh, with Nova's the compute module, um, to deploy and, and manage your, your, your machines. But this makes for a better slide. Um, then you've got Rackspace Cloud, pretty similar to everything we've seen before. So you've got Ubuntu as an option. Um, and again, you can uh, also, there's a, there's a command line uh, tool for Rackspace. And they have, I think they have Nova, and then they have some Supernova as a command line option for managing your, your domains on, on Linux. But say you don't want to host your stuff in someone else's cloud. Um, we ran into this with a lot of customers um, at my previous job. They wanted to, to run their own cloud. So they wanted to be able to spin up instances and kill instances and have dev environments and other things. Um, so this was actually before OpenStack was very big. So we sort of rolled our own OpenStack-ish thing that was not nearly as cool. Um, but these days, if you want to run cloud on Ubuntu, you want to use OpenStack. Um, previously, you might have heard of Eucalyptus which is still around and still supported by a few organizations. Um, but uh, OpenStack has a lot of support, um, which leads me to believe this is the direction it's going in. Of course, HP is paying me to work on OpenStack, and there's a whole bunch of us who are being paid by HP to work on OpenStack. Um, so there's a lot, in any given day, I will work with people from all these companies um, working on pieces of it. So there's a lot of developer time and effort from a lot of company, big names. And of course, Rackspace and HP are already using it in their cloud in production. And the foundation, I think, was founded late last year, so they're actually an organization and everything now themselves. So, if you actually want to try this out, um, there is a <coughs> project called DevStack. Um, one of the really awesome things about OpenStack is it's very modular, and you can use Zen, you can use KVM as the virtualization technology, you can use whatever, you can use a bunch of different database backends, you can use tons of different storage backends, so it's very pluggable and very modular, and you can put all kinds of things into it that you want. The problem with that is if you say, I want to try OpenStack, you have all these questions, you have all these options, tons of things you can choose from. And that's pretty overwhelming if you just want to check it out and run it and see what it is. So they put together DevStack, which is pretty much this really long script, uh, the uh, stack.sh script. 
and it goes and does tons of things um, to install a, a dev stack option, a dev stack um, environment with some default options. And it's very easy to get going. These instructions actually do work mostly. So you install Ubuntu, just a server. I'd recommend not doing this just on your desktop. Um, on my machine over here, I've got it booted into its own dev stack environment. Um, or you can boot it into a VM because it defaults to KVM if you're running a modern system. You've got hardware virtualization. And KVM can run inside KVM, so it actually works in virtualization, which is pretty cool stuff. Um, so you install Ubuntu Tolo 4, and I usually do all my upgrades and everything to make sure it's the latest. Um, you have to install Git, which this doesn't say, um, but by the next command you may know that. Um, so you then you git clone the repository that's got the current dev stack script in it. Once you've got that, you cd into the dev stack directory and then run this script, uh, stack.sh. And I actually downloaded this in case I wouldn't have internet. Um, uh, kernel virtual machine? Yeah. Yeah, it's a virtualization technology, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, VMware or Zen or something. Oh, that is not the right one. <laughs> Gimp is coming with Zubuntu again. <laughs> we brought it back. All right, that can go away now. Where's my app? All right, that's not going away. So the stack script only works on Ubuntu. Why is my thing not working? Um, it only works on Ubuntu and Fedora. I think it's Fedora 16. All right, this is not typing right now. Let me see. Oh, I have a thing in front of me. I can't even see. Thank you. So on their on their website, so you run this stack.sh and it runs and it does all kinds of things. It changes your sources.list, it adds users to your machine, it installs tons of packages, and starts running all these applications. So on the website, they suggest, why don't you go read the stack.sh while you're waiting? So they have this really nice HTML version of stack.sh, which has the, the code over on this side, which is, um, um, I don't know my right from my left. Um, and then it's got like all the, all the comments that's in the stack.sh file down the other side. So you can sort of go along if you're not familiar with shell scripting and, and figure out what it's doing for all these things. Um, something else you'll learn by reading the stack.sh script is while DevStack does provide default options for everything, you can also change them. So if you don't want to use KVM or you don't have virtualization on your hardware, you can ins uh, instead use Zen. Um, you can change, if you don't want to use MySQL, you can change the database backend that it's using. Um, and other things just by setting environment in or environmental variables in the shell. Um, and then the stack script will pick those up and, and install it with those instead. Um, so it's a pretty cool script. Um, it takes forever to run because it's downloading tons of packages. Um, it also detects what version, what distro you're using. Um, and while it does detect all these, we haven't actually tested all, the, all these. Um, the OpenStack infrastructure team, um, we just got the Quantal slaves running, um, I think, about two weeks ago to do all the testing for this. So, um, yeah, so it's a very interesting script to read if you are interested while you're waiting for this to install. So, this is, oh, this is where I get to do my live demo that's totally going to work. Alright, we have a login. So, um, I, I ran DevStack on my little laptop over here. Um, it's This is a $250 Lenovo that I got from Fry's. Um, it run, has virtualization, but it's um, got like a 1.6 gigahertz processor, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, it does have 8 gigs of RAM, so it can run virtual machines um, very slowly. Um, so this is, um, this web interface here is called Horizon. It's uh, the web interface for OpenStack. Um, so again, I think most people will not use the w web interface, um, but if you're a company who's looking to deploy this for customers, you may want to use the web interface um, to provide to your customers. Um, 
you might have seen in my screenshots that Rackspace and HP did not use Horizon as an interface. They sort of wrote their own. Um, I think that's because either Horizon didn't exist or just wasn't mature enough at the time. Um, and also, it's, it's Horizon, this interface is not going to scale very well. Um, it definitely needs a lot of love if anyone's looking to contribute. And I'm pretty sure it runs in Django, so it's uh, Python. We're everything in OpenStack is Python. Well, a lot of things are. So this is the basic administrative screen when you log in. Where did my mouse go? All right. <coughs> um, so right now, I don't have anything running. Um, but if I did want to run it, why does it only say terminate? Well, that's fun. Well, I can reboot it and see what happens. I think I shut my machine down in a bad state or something. So it's doing a hard reboot. So this is a VM that I set up, and I'll go back to my slides in a couple minutes to show exactly how I set it up. Um, but it, it only takes a couple of minutes. Actually, while this is booting, I can go back to my slides. So I logged in, got to my overview page. Um, so what OpenStack comes with, or DevStack comes with, it comes with this CROS image, which is a pretty really basic um, slimmed down image that's sort of built for people testing out stuff on clouds or running on clouds, just very simple Linux. Um, or you can download um, IMG files in uh, CCOW how to format. Um, and this actually UEC images is actually the same URL as cloud images uh, .ubuntu.com. So you just search through the cloud images directories and say you want you want find to find an IMG file. So you grab the link. This is the link to 1204 server. Um, you bring up, I'll show you how to do this in a minute, you bring up the create an image um, dialog. And then you just put in a name, which is a human readable name that you'll reference later. Um, you put in the <coughs> image location. So you don't download it. You just grab that URL and put it in here. Um, Horizon will download it for you. And then you tell it what format it is. Um, you give it minimum disk and RAM requirements, which will then uh, later dictate what, what kind of um, uh, template you can use for it, whether you want like a really tiny VM or a big VM. You have to put in some minimum specs here so that um, you know which template it's going to work for. Um, and then you can make lots of servers. Um, but first you should set, set up SSH keys because if you don't set up your SSH keys first, you won't be able to log into any of these awesome servers that you created and that's not a fun time. <laughs> Um, so they're a snapshot of something that's already installed, but they're you can you can m manipulate them and, and it saves history and everything. So um, you're not actually running like an installer or anything. You are just bringing up an image that's then it, it becomes like a, a persistent thing. Um, so you set up your SSH keys, um, and then when you go to set up an image. Um, one of the tabs there is access and security, and that's where you select which key pair you wish, wish to use. So during the image deployment, um, it pops your SSH keys into the image um, as part of the setup. So then you can log in just with your SSH key password. Um, so right, so to launch an image, um, so you can select the image from the tab, and I'll show this live in a moment. Um, and then you select which image it is, and it's the image that I would have uploaded just a moment ago. Um, I n gave it an instant na instance name, which ends up being its host name. And then a flavor is um, pretty much a what like a VPS size, like what what whether you, how much RAM you want to give it and how much other stuff. So this would be if you're on Amazon or something and you you have a free account and they give you a tiny one. So that would be the flavor. The flavor would be tiny. Um, but since I required um, eight gigs of space and a gig of RAM. Um, the only one I can use is the custom flavor that I created here that actually meets those requirements. And I'm only launching one, so you can say how many you're going to launch at once. Um, and then once you have it up and running, which it should be in my other window here. Uh, yep, it's running now. Um, you can actually SSH into it. Now, 
it automatically um, sets up uh, a LAN inside of the machine. So I can't actually access it from this machine directly. Try it one more time. So um, can you see that at all? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to SSH into my other machine over here. On the Ubuntu images, the ones you downloaded from the cloud image site, um, the default user on those images is Ubuntu. And then my address was 10.0.0.2. I use passwordless keys. <laughs> um, so now it's logged into that image that I just deployed. Um, well, now I made that too big so I can't see it. So you'll see it's not it's not running a whole lot. Um, it's running DHCP client, so it can grab an IP address when it comes up. Um, but other than that, it's it's pretty much just a very very basic um, slim Ubuntu install, and that's all just running from OpenStack now. So you'll see it's running, um, and you can do other things. So now that the it's running, um, you can pause it or suspend it. I looked up the difference between these the other day. Um, Suspend, I think, is the one that pretty much makes it go to sleep entirely, and it's like turning it off essentially. Like, and then pause actually keeps it sort of pers like in RAM, not in RAM. I don't know. It's it's more alive if you pause it. Um, but you can pretty much manage everything from your instance um, here in this thing. Um, so I mentioned I'd, I'd show how to actually add the image. Those screens I had up on the slides. Um, So here you can, if you wanted to create an image, this is the screen where I put up where you name it. That's funny. Um, and then, then you put in that URL of wherever you want to download the image file from. Um, so that's creating an instance, uh, an image. And then this is where you can run instances from. Um, the place you set up your SSH keys in is in this access and security section. So I've got a couple SSH keys in here. I've got one for the system itself, and then when I was testing it, I was doing it at my computer at home. Uh, so this is where you would uh, import a key pair. So if you've already created an SSH key on your desktop, you can name it, which is a human-readable name, and then you just put in your public key um, in this section. And then when you go to create your image, you'll just tell it which key you want to use. That's pretty much Horizon and launching a VM with OpenStack or DevStack. Um, but DevStack, it's um, pretty much for developers and it's also um, sort of for testing. So it's not actually the thing you're going to run in production for your customers or your boss or whoever. So it's a really good learning environment. Um, I suggest if you want to change some of the things in it, change some of the environment variables, maybe load it up with a different um, virtualization technology. Um, but pretty much you, DevStack is just a really great place to learn, um, also to develop on if you want to help the OpenStack project. Uh, if you find a bug or anything, um, you can find it on DevStack and run all kinds of test suites against it and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and also you have, to, you have to figure out what all these things mean. Um, what, what, what the heck is Nova? Uh, so I, I put this on my monitor so I would remember what they all are. <laughs> um, so they have all these great, so uh, I mentioned Horizon is sort of that dashboard. Um, Keystone is identity management, so you could manage the administrative users in the Horizon dashboard, and also it also manages the permissions on the command line. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe so. So a lot of people just run it on laptops for testing. Um, I believe since you can you can define storage backends and stuff, you can make it larger. So if you define a different storage backend, you can like say it's using iSCSI or something. Um, 
So you can put it on multiple, but it's meant to be so people can use it on one machine because that's what most of us have um, for testing. Um, no, that should work fine. I haven't done it. I've I've used KVM actually for dev stack before. Um, the documentation also is very good. Oh, sure. Did you? That's a good question. I think you have to assume a trusted source. I mean, uh, downloads can get corrupt anyway in the download process, so it doesn't do an MD5 check, but that's a good question. Yeah, so doing it doing it through the dashboard is just pretty much like the easy, fan, like easy way to do it. Um, you can actually download image files and just drop them into the directory that, that DevStack looks in for images. Um, and, and configure it from there. So you can do your M own MD5 film without using the cookie interface. So you can just download it, run MD5 uh, film on it, and verify it yourself. Uh, there may be tools out there that people are using, but I'm not sure. Oh, sure. Um, I'm sorry, did... Um, like a desktop, or oh, another node doing a Nova compute with DevStack. Um, that's a, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, you might be able to, um, but the script itself is pretty simple. I don't know. That's a good good question, Nathan. You, you might be able to, and since you know com compute Nova is just another piece of it, it may be possible to swap that out. Yeah. Um. So some notes about running this OpenStack thing with Ubuntu. Um, this is my favorite picture <coughs> in the world. It's um, from, from the, the Ubuntu server team. Um, this is actually from when they were doing planning. Um, if you're running 1204, um, the LTS version, which most people running servers are doing, um, you if you apt-get install OpenStack on that, you're going to get uh, OpenStack Ethic, um, because that's the release that came out right before Ubuntu. Um, DevStack releases track Ubuntu, excuse me, pretty closely, and that's mostly because a lot of the developers who were starting out with OpenStack were using Ubuntu. Um, and it's been fun in this new job seeing how many people have come from Canonical to come to work on OpenStack. Um, so there's a lot of Ubuntu people involved. So that's why Ubuntu was the original platform. It does support Fedora now, and we're about to start spinning up some Red Hat slaves once we figure out licensing. Um, so. OpenStack comes. OpenStack makes their release about a month before the next Ubuntu release comes out. So Ethics came out right before the 1204 version of Ubuntu. But since they wanted people to be able to upgrade to new versions, uh, Canonical maintains uh, this Ubuntu Cloud Archive, which allows you to upgrade to newer versions of newer and tested versions of OpenStack while still running 1204. So you can see right now if you install the Ubuntu Cloud Archive repository. Um, you can install OpenStack Folsom, and soon you'll be able to install Grizzly once that's released. And then in the fall, you'll be able to install Havana on your old 1204 machine. Um, and then, but the non-LTS versions, um, so 1210, if you apt-get install OpenStack, it comes with the Folsom version. In 1304, um, if you apt-get install OpenStack, you will get the Grizzly version of OpenStack, which will have come out just before that. Um, so. This is a pretty good guide for working if you're looking to uh, use OpenStack on Ubuntu, and if you're using the LTS, you have options there. And that's pretty much all I had. So, a question? So if you're going to 1304, 1304 is not a long-term support release, it's not an LTS. So that one's actually more of a complicated one, you have to go to 1210 and then go to 1304. Um, so it's not a very smooth process. Uh, the next LTS is 1404, and you should be able to upgrade you know, 12, 1204 to 1404. Um, and they usually have all the things worked out for that by the 
like the, the dot one release of the LTS, that's when they start prompting people to do the upgrades. Um, and then it's a pretty smooth proce process. Um, as far as OpenStack goes, if you're upgrading um, using the cloud archive all along, then you will eventually get to the same version that the next LTS is using. So that should go pretty smoothly, but it's we haven't actually met, gone into a release cycle where that has happened yet because OpenStack's you know, not that old as far as LTS to LTS timing goes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I think it's a bit of both. I mean, they're using HP Cloud now, um, and HP Cloud's actually using a much older version of OpenStack um, that they modified, and now they're like, oh no, now we can't upgrade. And so I think they got into a position where they said, you know, we need to be part of the process and sort of be involved in the development of this thing because we don't want to have to patch our own thing all the time. You know, sort of the standard thing that companies get themselves into when they take open source stuff and <laughs> mess with it themselves. So I think part of it is, is them just being practical and wanting to be involved so that they, the product that is released, um, just that you can just do a git pull and they've got their product right away without too much m messing with it. Um, it is it is also important that they're they're showing a good face in the community. I mean, they're one of the sponsors, I think, at this conference. And um, this talk I'm giving here is actually sort of personal. Like, I'm doing this for myself, but they paid me to come here. So they're supporting the work that open sourcey people do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sort of depends on what you want. Um, currently, HP has a free version, so you could try it out. Lindo doesn't have, like, a free version, whereas Amazon has free versions, too. I think, I don't, I signed up for all of these, um, but Windows Azure has a free one. That doesn't use OpenStack. Um, I don't think Rackspace has a free one. I have to check on that. Uh, I don't think I actually spun up an instance on Rackspace in the past. But if you did want to try it out, yeah, HP has like free, free for 30 days, I think, or something. Um, Amazon's free for a year with ver just really small instances. And, um, LinNode has a money-back guarantee, but there's not a free version. But it is month to month. Um, and that's another thing. The pricing models for these vary a lot. Um, when you're buying a VPS, you typically pay monthly. Um, when you're spinning up instances on these more dynamic cloud instances, you're usually paying um, by smaller time increments. You may pay by the hour um, you have something running. Limitations. <laughs> um, I haven't run a desktop from it, but I presume <laughs> you might be able to. Um, there hasn't been any task I've found that's particularly challenging. Um, it's really fun getting familiar with the command line options for things like the compute module, Nova. Like there, it's it's a lot. Uh, but fortunately, there's a lot of examples out there, and there's lots of help out there, and tons of people are using this now. So um, the learning curve is not so bad because you've got something. So yeah, and the mailing lists are all very, very active. I totally don't read the user one. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> but it's very good help. Everyone's pretty cool on that. And they you know, tell you to read the manual, and they show you where in the manual, which is always nice. <laughs> um, OpenStack also does developer summits. Um, they do them... A few weeks before the Ubuntu Developer Summit, and as you explained, they're, they're the Ubuntu Developer Summit, you know, is very work-based. The OpenStack Summit is very closely based on that. I haven't gone to one yet, but I'm going to the next one. Um, so they have sessions, and cool. <laughs> um, and you all get together and work, and then you go drink beer. I hear, and then you drink beer, and then you work. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Never <laughs> with any software. <laughs> I say, I say, don't trust that it's going to upgrade seamlessly. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job of doing that. Um, but I always say, you know, do it in test environments for before you put it into production, because um, you always have quarter cases, and you may have something that's configured that someone didn't test properly or some other ways. Um, I would never do an in-place upgrade on a production system without testing it first, um, except for you know basic security updates. But full versions, 
I'd be careful. Yeah, I'd n it's not really because of OpenStack. It's just because of software. It's always broken. <laughs> Especially something with like an infrastructure here. I mean, you're upgrading like your whole thing, <coughs> and if it breaks, then everything is down, and that's no fun. <laughs> so. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, thanks. <laughs>